being honest. A couple million now, I'm causing a commotion. I've been coasting. Hear my name all around the world, like an explosion. Do I have to say anything? Uh, I'll... I'm gonna do it. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Zero Gravity Gaming. Uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties we were running into. And uh, we are now getting into our match of the night. Early stage capitalism versus KRG Tempest. I am Thousand Eyes. With me is Cityscape. How are you doing, City? It's a pretty good day. I mean, I get to live a good life where I don't have Fridays, so I have the weekends now. So, some that sounds good to me. League of Legends to say. All right, and uh, going into it, uh, as we always do, we have our drafts done in Pro Draft before we get into the actual draft in Champion Select. We we're planning to show it. We did, like I said, we had technical difficulties, so we're unfortunately going to be getting it to you now. However, uh, the band's coming through. We do see Fizz, Kha'Zix, Kled on the side of uh, early stage capitalism, and KRG Tempest taking out Yumi, Diana, and Urgot. A lot of target picks here being banned out. Yeah, I mean, one of the core interesting parts of this draft was this Olaf pick we see, mm -hmm. which was actually a flex pick, where, weirdly enough, they chose to show the flex a little early. So the Orn was actually picked into knowing that it's an Olaf top. And I think yes. the fact that Orn was left open here is a core problem for Red Side's draft, in theory. Because Orn can relatively keep Olaf in check, hopefully. Maybe some ridiculous stuff will happen, who knows? And then just kind of outscale him. He's kind of like the kryptonite of Olaf, if you think about what the two champions want to do. So. Yeah. So, like, it really, to me, it seems like Olaf has to get something done early on, or it's going to basically just. Your, yes. oh, once Orton gets some armor, that lane seems like it's really going to be a struggle for a while. Yeah, and it's super easy for Orin to get armor because of how Orin works. Like, you can just buy items in lane, pick up a ruby crystal, pick up a cloth armor. It shouldn't be too hard for Orin to at least stay afloat. And even if he's down 60, 70 CS, you'll see that lane really switch to Orin's favor into mm -hmm. like mid late. 
Yeah. Moving on to our jungle matchup, though, we have Trundle being picked up after the buffs versus a Zack from Reckless. Yeah, I'm, I haven't really seen new Trundle. Obviously, this is really early on the patch, so it's kind of interesting that we're seeing Trundle and Ziggs both be picked. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, I think Trundle into Zack is pretty good matchup. It's not fantastic, but Trundle, you know, it's it's a it's a jungle pick. Like if the jungler's comfortable on it, that's number one. I don't think it's going to be super impactful, but it can contest early game. It can get them to that late game they need. That's really all you want from jungle in this meta, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then moving on now, we have the Ziggs versus the Swain in the mid lane. I don't love the Ziggs pick here. I'm a big fan of when we deal with these lower elo matches, I like to keep it as simple as possible. And Ziggs is famously really difficult to play. Pure skill shot champion. I do think that the long range helps. Like, we're probably not going to see Ziggs be the same type of, like, liability that other champions could potentially be if the game goes bad. But I do mm -hmm. think it's going to be tough for Ziggs to have the type of like big game impact that you might need because obviously with Trundle or an Ash, it's a relatively damage light team, not as much burst, especially. So that's one of the conflicts in blue team's draft for me. And then finally in the bottom lane, we do have Ash and Morgana versus Caitlyn and Nautilus here. What was interesting to me was the Morgana was first picked and the Nautilus was actually picked into it. And usually Morgana is a pretty solid counter into the Nautilus. Yeah, uh, I definitely feel like in a 2v2, uh, early stage capitalism should have this bot lane. It should be a point of power for them. I do think Nautilus is still a great champion, even though his Q did get nerfed a little bit. And mm -hmm. I think Nautilus is really important for the comp that Red Side has, which is basically like you have four frontliners and then you have a Caitlyn. So Nautilus allows them to kind of rampage through this game if Ziggs and Ash fall behind in damage because there's a lot of health on Red Team and Blue Team doesn't have many good ways to deal with it. Like you really need that Ash to get going. If Ash falls like... 500,000 gold behind this game is going to be really really hard for blue team yeah i actually i thought it was a really smart pickup for early stage capitalism to get the morgana uh once the yumi was banned away uh salt and petty plays a lot of yumi pretty much a yumi one trick um and pinky pwned a lot of pinky pwns games are on hook engaged champions the nautilus the thresh uh just a lot of heavy engaged leona as well so immediately taking the morgana seemed like they really did their research on what they could expect out of uh krg's team i find myself generally impressed with the level of research both of these teams did i felt like obviously with the first round bands pretty much entirely target bands yeah and then you have strategies like the morgana first pick that takes it away like, you know, picking up Trundle, picking up the Olaf for the flex. It felt like both teams were pretty prepared for this match. And the outcome is kind of to be determined. It's not a situation where one team definitively outdrafted the other. I'd say red team's draft is has more win conditions, but blue team's draft has the singular, like, we're going to get to late game with Ziggs and Ash, and if they have a lot of gold, we're going to win the game. Yeah, and it's well, going to be hard to stop that. We'll see how that goes as we load into the game. And uh, I do believe we will we'll be right back.
and welcome back everybody as we get right into our as per usual pause can't can't have a can't have a zero gravity stream without a pause but luckily it is a short one as we are getting into the game here so once again uh over on the blue side we do have uh early stage capitalism with uh, Evil Gambit on the orange top lane, Swaggy P on the Trundle Jungle, Gummy Uwu on the mid lane Ziggs, and in the bottom lane, EOL Zero and Sultan Petty on the Ash and the Morgan. And then, and then yep. Oh, dude. Okay, you can do it. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we sorry. have on the red side as well, then we have KRG Potato on the Olaf top lane, KRG Reckless. On the Zach Sanguine on the mid lane Swain, and then Jody Junior Eight and Pinky Pwned on the Caitlyn and Nautilus duo. We're seeing relatively standard level one, although like the Or and Ziggs both being in the same location is, I guess, a bit different. And the Or actually used his level one ward to ward Pit, so that's pretty cool. Actually, I actually like that quite a bit, to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, I think I, the I, core. I... Wait, Ziggs didn't buy items. Oh dear! <laughs> oh goodness! Uh... <laughs> That's a bit of a. That seems like a bit of a mistake. And and he did. He doesn't have teleport, so he can't easily rectify the situation either. Yeah. If you had, if you had teleport, then you just go back and you TP back, and it's embarrassing, but it's not something you actually have to deal with. To be fair. I don't think Duran's run is necessary, and he should be relatively healthy, hopefully. So, I don't think it's gonna like change the game that much, but it's definitely uh, maybe some signs of nerves coming out. Yeah, and Potato getting in these this early damage, trying to throw down those axes there has to make use of that early game advantage Olaf has there, and and make sure something is. Something gets going there, or, or really, that Orn is going to start taking off. Yeah, and I think, as, as I said before, like, Orn is going to fall behind in this lane. If he doesn't, then it's just doomsday. Like, it's doomsday for KRG. Yeah. But it's a question of, can he fall behind CS, or does he fall behind, like, experience and kills? If he gets solo killed, if he gets two levels behind, it's going to be a nightmare for blue team to deal with the soul off. And that was a nice hook. And here comes the Zack Engage, getting the flop onto the Ash, getting the knock up then afterwards the Q. But over in the top lane, we have Potato getting ganked, and that's going to be the first blood going over to Orn, as they did not confirm that kill from KRG on the bottom side now. And just like you were saying, if that Orn gets off the ground early, that is the worst case scenario. So Potato going to be really in a bad way here. Now, to be fair, I do really enjoy the play that uh, the play that Zach went for, Reckless went for there. Get him the summoning spell out, and we're seeing it punished here with them continuing to go in. More trading coming out there, and Jody might get... Ooh, had to pop the heal there from Zero to make sure that he didn't die. Takes a Q on the way out, and Zero is going to have to either play really safe here. I don't think he can back. That's too much of a wave. But he also only has 100 HP. This yeah, is this is you're, you're playing they with fire. They can actually get dived here because Zach's still here. This has been yeah. really well played from KRG to set up this play, and I, I'm kind of surprised that they're not trying to push it harder. If they knew that Zach, if they knew Trundle was topside, that was definitely a very doable gank, and that could yeah. have been disastrous. Yeah. They don't know where. Swaggy is right now. They're getting vision in that tri brush there. They both know that the other ha team has vision in there, I believe. And now Zoro is just stuck farming with the volley, making sure that he can at least get something going here while he waits for his health to tick back up. As I was saying before, the bot lane is definitely like the definitive lane for this game in terms of if the ash doesn't get gold then blue team's gonna struggle heavily in terms of damage so it's really smart of zach to focus the lane and nautilus hit a couple great hooks Oof. there's been some great poke from caitlin like this krg bot lane is playing very well 
they got the help they needed and they're ahead, which is phenomenal. But at the same time, I felt like the advantage could have been pressed stronger. So it, it depends. Obviously, the Ash could still die, could still get caught by a skill shot. But this should be relatively even at the end of the day. Yeah. And obviously, the, the more that that Orn can really press that that advantage that he did get and, and get off the ground earlier, that will buy more time for the Ash to actually output damage there. We see the full health horn there getting in, getting the, getting the, uh, oh man, I am blanking on the, the brittle. That is what it is called. <laughs> get in hey, the brittle. Uh, I was letting you get that one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not good with My, my specialty is not always remembering names in there. And there is the damage Orn can put out if you let him. Potato's in a bad spot, gonna try and trade, but the flash burnout means that he goes down for nothing, and that is an 0-2 Olaf there, as Orn now level 6, gonna push this in and try and get some damage on this tower. There is no teleport either for Potato to answer. As you saw there, the Olaf can still match Orn 1v1, because obviously the champion's very strong. But the issue here is, like, look at this wave. Like, he's missing yeah. out on all of this EXP, and that's go that's going to put him about a level down. And that level is actually going to be more impactful than the kill gold. And the CS is even, so the gold isn't even that relevant. It's a little relevant. But it, two turret plates is not nothing. <laughs> it's not nothing, but I think gold wise, Olaf is still in this lane. It's just that yeah. the experience is going to start being an issue. Or at least it's gonna become really hard for Olaf to not like to win the lane as hard as he needs to win it. Like, yeah. if I was Olaf here, I'd hit a Q on him and just run him down with ult. Like, he needs to make that sort of aggressive play. I guess it's a bit risky if Trundle, like, happened to do some cheeky stay just in lane around. or something and just get yeah. the other kill, but it's not the type of lane where you want to be going 50-50 as Olaf. You need to be making the play, and he's, he's going to find it very difficult to make that play. Now that the Bramble Vest is coming through, it's not going to get any easier. Right. And just to, just to put it in perspective there, when Potato walked into lane, just pinged six, and Gambit was already three quarters of the way over to seven and is now seven. So there really is just a major experience disadvantage there. Looking around to the other lanes, though, we're seeing winning lanes coming from mid and bot so far. Not as much of a lead, but still getting themselves off the ground and hopefully they're going to be able to pick up their Olaf and kind of take him into wherever they need to so he can be a body later. Now this is really the first big test of the game, this Infernal Drake. Red team absolutely needs this Infernal and realistically there should be no way they don't get hit. Bot lane is sizably ahead. Mid lane, there is a bit of a CS lead but it hasn't translated to items quite yet so it's like a Dorondrin, it's not that significant. Him not buying Dorondrin actually gave him the buy for... <laughs> gave him the big, lost chapter. Big so. <laughs> Just it don't buy worked. items so you can rush your first item. <laughs> it, I mean, he could have still bought the Amtome, but it, it could have been worse. At least he got something. But we're actually seeing blue team fight where he aggressively going in. And the Zack going in, getting really low, but Swain comes in with the ult. The, Z the Ziggs bomb comes in, puts Zack in passive, and Swaggy has to run as that buys enough time for them to burn down the Trundle. And Zuro just died early on in that fight. I didn't even see him go down. And that should be now a dragon, barring a steal, going over to KRG. So the core issue here is kind of the nightmare situation you have if you're like a gold coach, like you're coaching a gold team. Yes, blue blue team's comp is very much centered around scaling, especially that the Orn has the lead and the bot lane's a little bit behind. But they actively tried to contest that objective, and in doing so, really just put themselves in a hole. They could have completely given up that dragon, maybe traded it for like a wave on mid and bot, and then you'd be like pretty insignificantly behind in both lanes but instead like bot lanes up 14 cs a kill and an assist mid lanes up 20 cs gonna be like 17 cs a kill and an assist those are big leads and this this orden isn't gonna win the game by himself 
the Orn being ahead is more an allowance for the Ash and Ziggs to do their thin late game if they're even. It's not going to carry them to late game. So they definitely are in a significant hole now, and they need to realize that and play appropriately, which means just get him farm on your carries and get him towards that late game. They can give up the lead, but they can't keep leading out and contesting objectives that they can't ever win a fight for. You're not going to win that dragon fight. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, and now with that dragon down, that does allow for Reckless and Swaggy to put a little bit more focus on the top side for the time being, as Rift Herald is the only neutral objective up. Swaggy seems like he wants to try and at least get vision control in that area and uh, probably try and play around this Orn that's got the lead there. That seems to be what they've got going for him, and they need to kind of make their moves based up around this top lane here. Well, an important note is that I don't think Orn actually has a significant 1v1 lead. Like, he's definitely not bullying the Olaf, and he won't for a bit. And quite frankly, I think the Mercury Treads won't help that either. So going for a Herald isn't Ooh. that great, but this is Alt's coming through. Reasonable. There we go. The ult from the Olaf traded to make sure that he could stay alive there. Good instincts there to kind of have an idea that once Orn was ignoring the wave to move up and uh, try and fight him over the, the vision there, that there was something up there and he just backed out. So allowing allowing his jungler to make up for something while he's wasting the other jungler's time, at least getting something going there. At the same time, oh, well, oh, we're we got, that, an right? engage, got an engage bot side there. The black shield blocked or taken down there. The Zonia's coming through, the ult from Morgana, but it's not going to be enough. And Zero, he stepped on a trap, had to be very careful there. Almost liable to get hooked there as another great gank coming down on the bot side. Reckless is just putting up a tent there to make sure that Caitlyn is online. I was uh, actually about to say that Zach's early attempts at gank and bot. Oh, wait. Oh, well. We got to dive bot, li bot lane. Jody starts tanking early. He's tanking again. Just not get it, but it doesn't even matter. He can tank as much as he wants. He just walks out and then gets the uh, ace in the hole for the kill there. That's pretty brutal. I mean, this is really the doomsday situation if you're blue team, if you're early stage capitalism. This is uh, the Ash who needs to be the primary carry of the team being just a ridiculous amount of gold behind. She's 1.88k behind, pretty much an insurmountable gold lead. We're seeing some fight in the top side. Yeah, right. just your just your normal top lane <laughs> noodle fest. Orin or takes some damage. Orin doesn't really care. He's just gonna put it right back on you. And now ultimate's been popped there, getting oh that really cute. forward. Yeah, potato was ready to keep chasing there, but now, now with the, the ult down. Ult. Ornalt coming through. That might actually end up being a kill. Oh no. Wait, he popped the brittle a little early and it almost took him down. But uh, <laughs> whew, I was I was ready to call that out because the br I've played enough Orn to know that when you use your ult, you put a brittle stack on and you want to pop that before you use your W again to get another brittle stack down. And that almost ended up getting Gambit killed, but he did not. He went he got the 1v1 kill there and now, level 11, we're getting close to the point where Orn can start upgrading people's items once they get them online. Well, the problem is that neither mid nor bot has an item to upgrade yet, and that's really the story of this game. Top lane is doing a great job. There's been great gank pressure by Swaggy P. I think Potato has misplayed crucially a few times. Flash burned by Ziggs, kind of unfortunate positioning. Uh... But most importantly, I think Evil Gambit has actually played really well. I thought that 1v1 was very well handled. I'm still on the fence about this Merc Treads purchase, and if he had other gold instead of the Merc Treads, that definitely would have been less close, and if he had played it better mechanically. But the core point is that when your top lane's ahead, you need your bot lane to play safe. And that's been the main issue for, Evil, uh, for uh, Blue Team is that their bot lane has simply gotten caught out by unnecessary Zach games. 
There's mm -hmm. Zach has done pretty well, but especially that last gank, very telegraphed, very obvious. It was like a minute after Trundle's top lane gank, and they still fell for it. Still gave up just a huge amount of gold swin. And again, even as this Orin continues to fight the Olaf and actually starts to win these trades throughout playing him, we look at the bot lane lead and it's so much more impactful on the game state. Yeah, if, if we just look at items right now, we have Caitlyn with the Storm Razor completed and having a BF sword and a dagger in the inventory to Ashes, Bilgewater Cutlass, and Recurve Bow. Not even a full item down or a full item in yet is just a major, major problem. Good Black Shield coming through. Reckless doesn't want to pull the trigger on that, but a teleport has been burned. So Gambit coming through wants to get the ult down. The Ash ult just barely misses, but. Here comes Zack to try and stifle the engage. Salt and Petty going down very quickly, but might have been a sacrifice they wanted. Gambit taking a lot of damage there. The Swain is very big and is not going down. Here comes Jody flashing forward, getting the damage down onto Zero, the only person really left in that fight. And that is going to be a double kill going over to the Caitlyn. Three people down and should be another dragon going over to KRG. And again, we're just seeing the slight amateurishness, inexperience of early stage capitalism coming through. They're not making the right decisions. That fight was a straight up four, straight up five v four. Olaf wasn't even there, and they got massacred. What can you yeah. know from that? That wasn't a good fight. If you're losing yeah. five v four, <laughs> it's not winnable. And they they have been routinely unable to identify that, and that is what's cost them this five k gold lead. That's looking really hard to overwhelm when you look at the fact that 3k of that is in the ADC which is the core game position and so much of what can try and equalize it is Orin who isn't going to carry whatsoever mm -hmm. I was yeah. actually going to say that even if they give up that dragon they've been quite fortunate because it's not Infernal Soul it's going to be Ocean Soul which even with Ocean Soul, I think Blue Team can out Siege Red Team, or at least it doesn't play to what Red Team wants to do. And I, I think Cloud Soul just isn't very good for Red Team's team comp. I mean, Caitlyn ult doesn't do anything with it. Zack ult doesn't seem too great. Sweet Bit of a enjoy, fight. But we got fight coming through. Swaggy taking a lot of damage. Didn't get to pop the ult, but Gambit able to get that kill. Trying to get out, but I can't imagine that he's really going to get out of this. As Sanguine gets the shutdown there. Gets the extra 50 gold there. And now it looks like they might be able to try and force this, uh, force this Rift Herald coming through. Olaf covering the bottom side there as you have the, the, the lanes that lost fighting over the scraps there trying to get this ash back in the game but yeah that is going to be a rift herald there and the tempo is just solidly in krg's favor right now but at the same time blue team did manage to trade for mid tower which realistically you're gonna use this herald to get mid tower so it feels a bit strange potentially for red team although the ziggs is a little caught out here he does not have flash, does have the barrier, but doesn't matter there as Gummy's just going to go down there, caught out. He just Trying needed to... to walk down. Yeah. Yes. That's unfortunate. That was almost a, a little bit too long. But now, obviously, this Rift Herald is going to get more. Ooh. No Black Shield. Black Shield was late there, coming through. Picky Pode tagging the damage there as they take the tower and a kill along with it. And now, here comes, here comes Shelly. She's going to put a lot more damage down, and the Siege going in. Another great hook there! Another kill and another tower coming through. <laughs> Reckless does not want to stop. It's just one for one here. Every time we take a tower, we're going to take a kill. And the inhibitor is now open at 19 minutes. Here comes the Orn ult, though, trying to stop them. Gambit trying to get in there, but really, I don't think they have a whole lot here to stop them. Ziggs ult going to scare them away gonna barely keep that inhibitor alive as death timers are too short to really try and force that anymore this is still just continuously disastrous for early stage capitalism unfortunately they keep finding themselves in situations that are actually acceptable and then like 
finding the worst possible trade to get out of that situation. And I think it stems from a misunderstanding of what of what their team comp actually needs to do in the game state, which is understandable. My earlier point would be that you can give up the Dragon Soul, or at least, you know, the third dragon and probably the soul eventually in this game. I don't think that Cloud Drake or Ocean Soul would be that game changing. Like, it's not worth dying over, essentially. If it was Infer if it was Infernal Soul and Red Team gets it, it's game over. Like, you're not going to win that game. If it's Mountain Soul, I think Mountain Soul is very strong with Red Team. But they didn't identify that and kept taking dragon fights. And then you saw them there. They kind of went a bit too aggro for the Herald. The play around mid was very unfortunate, but they just didn't cut their losses. They kept getting picked off. And that's the sort of decision making that has given KRG the opportunity to punish, which they've done very well. Nautilus yeah, it, has played great. It, it feels like well. it feels like it's just been so much of as we get Gambit having to force a flash here. Hang on. There's Caitlyn coming down. There's a lot of people collapsing on this. Gambit gonna be just caught out. He's going to blow the ult, but I can't imagine that his team can follow up on this as he's just gonna end up going down. Another dragon going over, and that's the third dragon now coming in at just over 21 minutes for KRG. They look like they may be able to posture for that soul coming up. But yeah, going back to it, KRG, it just really feels like have been on top of their game and early stage capitalism have just constantly been too afraid to lose something that they keep trying to force things and they are too afraid to cut the losses. They don't, they say, well, if we give this, we're going to be behind. And rather than thinking about, well, we're going to be even more behind if we try and fight for it and lose, they just panic over the, the idea of losing. And we can see the problems that I had with their draft kind of reflected in how this game has went. The mid and the mid lane and the ADC both don't really have innate damage. You need items, you need probably a lot of items for them to really contest damage wise with the red team. Which not only well, we're seeing an engage oh, here. Engage here, Nautilus getting the ult onto the Trundle. He's popping the ult. He's gonna stay alive for a while. Might just stay uh, all the way alive. The ult keeping him alive and the heal from the Ash as well as the Ziggs W there was really crucial in spreading that fight apart. Just popped everybody in every direction. Okay. I'm gonna try and make this point quickly because this game continues to be like pretty chaotic considering the team comps. Um, when you saw that Orn get caught in bot lane with four red people on top of the Orn, your immediate thought should be, but what about Baron? And then you realize there's an Ash and a Ziggs. They're never going to take Baron at 21 minutes. If it was an Ash and a Cassiopeia or some other high DPS mid, you could hypoth hypothetically trade Baron for that. And that would be a huge win for early stage capitalism to the extent where it might even let them come back into a game as far behind as this one. If the game was like 4 or 5k, it'd be really great for them. But when you have Ziggs and Ash together with a team comp that has no other damage sources, you restrict the amount of plays that you're able to go for. And it doesn't feel like they've accurately assessed that because when you have those champions, your goal should just be, we get to 30 minutes as even as possible. And then we can start doing damage and making plays because you can't make plays if you can't kill the enemy. It's just, it, it won't work. <laughs> and they don't have the damage to kill anyone on red team right now. That's why every single kill has been the orb. Yeah. It, it is worth mentioning though, that, the the call the the forge god items are coming through the the looted zeko has been upgraded the blade of the ruin king has been upgraded and orn has got two upgraded items already so there is definitely some scaling coming online but it almost feels like it's just too little too late as there is nine thousand gold difference here and baron is on the table for krg they really want to try and bait someone into the coming into this pit you can definitely see the scaler, but you can also see it's more an image of what could have been if they weren't so behind <laughs> yeah. than an actual like comeback mechanism in this game. Because they're staring down Cloud Soul, which is 
not game ending, but definitely very good. And Baron, which those two things combined will, will most likely end the game, unless they play extremely well. Or KRG bungles, obviously possible. And okay. even if you get past that and get to oh. the Elder Craig... Oh. Checking with the- Oh, it just walks straight into four people and <laughs> runs away! And there goes the Morgana! Walk around the wall and there's the whole team! Morgana going down. Luckily though, only Morgana going down. That will give the Baron away, uh, but could have been a lot worse there as they just lose the support. They still have the ability late. They still have the ability to push these waves out as uh, KRG is going to sh run into this mid lane and try and get these super minions with the Baron buff and shove them down. Looks like they want to try and force the end of this game. Yeah, and you can kind of see what we've been talking about there. There's absolutely no universe in which Morgana does absolutely anything there. I mean, best case, they're not there and she doesn't die. But if they're there, she just dies. And then they get Baron anyway, because you can't possibly contest Baron. Contesting Baron would be actively losing the game, because you just lose the team fight, lose Baron, and then lose your base. What blue team needs to do in this game, and right now it's realistically too far behind, like you'd need an Elder Drake steal into some miraculous team fight. But what they needed to do was not engage KRG in the trade. Just let them take objectives, try and go for smart objective trades, which I actually felt like Swaggy P was quite good at. We're seeing again Damage over aggression. Another overextension there. Zigzalk coming in too little too late. Xeno taking a lot of damage. That's two people down. Orn not in this fight either, so their big beefy boy is stuck up top lane fighting the Viking. And now that should be the mid lane getting shoved in. Baron buff. The super minions coming through. <laughs> Some of the minions want to go over to top side, but uh, <laughs> it is going to be that Nexus Tower going down. Texas Tower number two also going to be going down. Ornolt coming through, but it's not going to be enough. And first game looks like it will be going over to KRG as the Nexus goes down and the game over comes through. Game one over to KRG. Quite the interesting game with that. Yeah. <laughs> really really felt like there was so much opportunity to allow that team to scale up and just so much fear of giving things away and losing a lead not being able to to say like okay we can play from behind that's fine we're we're good we'll scale up and it just turned into oh god we're losing way too much i need to make something happen and there went everything when you look at the damage done charts, you can immediately see the issue I have with this team composition. <laughs> the Ash did 5,000 damage. That's less damage than the enemy's act. The Trundle did 2,000 damage in a 27-minute game. And the Trundle was actually playing well. And I don't, I don't even necessarily feel as though Ash played that poorly. There were clearly some poor decisions, but... It's not the players being so trash that they actually just can't do damage. It's more a situation in which you pick all of these champions that don't innately do damage, and you're kind of hoping for a miracle to actually get you any kills. And it turns out that winning a game in Gold League without kills is pretty hard. Like, how many, how many games do we realistically see in Gold where the score is like, five to four at 30 minutes that just yeah. doesn't happen you're gonna have individual misplays you're going to have situations where people die unnecessarily and i did feel like a big issue with blue team's comp where they didn't really plan around what happened in this game which is botling got there kind of got wrecked by the zack a little bit unfortunate plays it happens yeah. A good team comp would have other ways to win the game. And unfortunately, this one just kind of falls apart when your ADC is down a thousand gold. Yeah.
Uh, with that, though, we will be taking a break as we get ready for game two. Don't go anywhere because we will be right back with more early stage capitalism versus KRG on Zero Gravity Gaming.
anyone to get off their darkest ground But gravity pulls you straight down Earth from a bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too Gravity 